So today we've worked with a school in Coventry and we've worked with a Year 5 class and what we've done is we've introduced them to who Historic England are and the, the idea of a photographic archive and what that includes. We've got them to look at a range of photographic images and we've got them to talk about what questions that, that they generate and we've got them to select the different images that they want to focus on and why they would make those choices. I've got a picture of a shopping centre and um, I chose it because it looks like, um, because the buildings look like a building that um, we wouldn't, that they wouldn't have um, bef before. They all show um, like the rubble or the rebuild of what's happening. Imagine you could meet someone who worked for John Lane. What sort of things would you like to ask them? So the children were really excited. They'd set up their questions and then they were really excited about meeting the people who'd actually worked on the very buildings that they'd looked at photographs of. How did you feel um, in your first day working at John Lane? I walked in the door and introduced myself. And the guy said, oh, I'm glad you're here. Can you go up and ask the foreman stonemason something? I can't remember what that was, but the ladders. So I merrily went out and I climbed this 90 feet with the ladders, got to the foreman stonemason and asked him the question. And he said, I don't know what you're on about. So I went back down again and I said to the guy who sent me up, I said, he doesn't know what I'm on about. He said, no, he wouldn't. I just did that to make sure that you'd climb 90 feet in the air without any problems. So that, that, that was my first, <laughs> first thing with John Langs. What equipment and tools, tools did you use? Mostly hand tools. Uh, there wasn't many electric tools back then. They were like, um, for drilling, we had braces, bits and braces. There was no battery drills back then. Can you show us the tools you used? Oh yes, I've got the tools here. You put them up like that and turn them. Like that. That was for drilling the holes. company cared for you very well and gave you br a break and lunch, what would be your favourite food? What was your favourite food? My favourite food was not lunch time, it was breakfast time, which was a, a quarter of an hour. And the best thing was an egg and bacon sandwich, and I can still taste that now. <laughs> So by the end, what had come together is we'd started off by introducing archives in general, we'd started talking about langs in general, then we'd focused in on a specific building. They then generated questions. They've then compiled something of a, an oral history from talking directly. So these people were in effect primary sources. And then it all came together with the cathedral where everything, I suppose, slots into place for the, for the pupils. How long did it take them to do it? He used to do all this lot, because it's all, it's what they call etched. So it's a glass and it's etched into it. So you've got a machine, which is like a little diamond cutter that vibrates. This is um, the column being dropped in by John Lang during the construction of Coventry Cathedral. The bottom of the column is narrow, the top of it is wide. And when, when it's in place, then the roof sits on the top, on, on the wide part. It, it took six years to complete, from 1956 to 1962. Today, we interviewed some people that worked with John Lang, and it was very interesting because we, get, we got to experience and listen to what happened to the cathedral, and, and we got to hear some people people talking about the rebuild of Coventry Cathedral. 
The people that have built it have told me that the whole Coventry Cathedral had took six years to make and they told us that John Lang has been a great company for them and that they really enjoyed it. And the really positive thing about this is it doesn't just have to be about the land collection or Coventry Cathedral. Some of the activities and the ideas and the approaches will translate to most places where schools and pupils can use images, they can use a local building, they can use people as a great resource and then that helps them to develop their sense of pride, their local identity, their sense of belonging and, and learning about their local heritage within the national story. Thank you.